On the seventh day of October, Halloween gave to me seven bacons digging, six doorways bending, five children yowling, four zombie bulls, three haunted mirrors, two monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, and welcome back to Legion Podcast, 31 Days of Halloween. This is Day 7. This is the conclusion of our first week of 31 Days of Halloween. I, for one thing, it has gone swimmingly. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I certainly have. Uh, So, let's let's discuss what we've been doing for just a a quick second here. First of all, we've been talking about hauntings. And... I uh, I love a good haunted house story. I like a good uh, a haunted object, as we saw with Oculus, or uh, a ghost ship like the uh, with the fog. And one of the more interesting ideas, I think, is of a person uh, being haunted, which brings us to the film we're going to be discussing tonight, uh, which is Stir of Echoes. And Stir of Echoes, I have to say, is a movie that I did not see in its entirety until I watched it for this. I thought I had seen it before. And then (laughs) as the movie continued on, I realized I never seen this, not all the way through. I've seen parts of it. I've seen about half of it. I didn't see the back half. And I, it was one of those movies that when it came out, it got uh, a lot of buzz. It was written and directed by a guy named David Kep, who is, um, a, a very famous screenwriter has written a number of big movies, wrote Jurassic Park, wrote, uh, I think the first Mission Impossible movie, wrote a lot of bad movies too, and directed some, uh, very famously directed that, uh, Johnny Depp movie Mordecai that nobody ever saw. Uh, and this movie came out at an interesting time cause it came out almost 10 years after I graduated high school. So I missed it in the theater. I never saw it in the theater and I just... I just kind of avoid, not avoided it. I I heard it was good. And then I think I started watching it one night and maybe fell asleep on it or something. And it was just one of those movies that I've had on my bucket list for a long time of, I need to sit down and really watch stir of echoes. Uh, A number of people whose opinions I respect very much have told me how good it is. And in most cases, I didn't believe them. Um, because again, David Kep has done some good stuff, but he's done some really terrible stuff too. And he has directed almost no good movies. And upon seeing it, I will say, I think Stir of Echoes is his one good movie, uh, based on what I've seen. I haven't seen every David Kep movie, nor will I probably, but of the David Kep films I have seen, Stir of Echoes is the one I would recommend most. Yeah. So it, it, the idea is that, uh, Kevin Bacon plays a a dude what lives in in Chicago and he and his wife and their kid are renting a place from one of their neighbors. And so Tom is his name in the movie, uh, Kevin Bacon. He's a, a line cutter for the phone company, works a real pedestrian job. One of the problems with the movie, I think, is that there was this sort of drop thread about how Catherine Irby, uh, his, who plays his wife, Maggie, that she is pregnant with her second kid. Um, he's not necessarily thrilled about that idea because it means that he's truly settling down, that he's becoming a, a grown up and, and giving up on his childhood and, and young adulthood dreams of being a rock star and so forth. And I wish there were more of that. There is a little bit of lip service paid to the idea that he always wanted to be remarkable or thought he would be remarkable. Uh, Something I think we all experience, right? Like we were all teenagers in high school and filled with delusions of grandeur and shit like that. And, And then you, as you grow up, you realize that, you know, life is tougher than that. You know, not, not everybody gets to win. Uh, not all the time. And so I think there's an interesting discussion of that to be had in a movie like this. And I just don't think this movie does anything with that. But that said, uh, aside from the fact that thematically, 
I think there are some some spinning plates that get dropped. And and if I'm wrong, please uh, shoot me a message and let me know uh, what I fucked up. But uh, aside from that, I do think it's a really good ghost story. I like the premise of somebody being hypnotized into being open to the world around them. And in so giving them this direction, it's sort of, you know, almost that gypsy curse kind of idea uh, of, uh, you know, you, you give somebody a third eye, open their third eye, and all of a sudden they can't block anything out. There's plenty of Asian horror films that are about that. The eye is kind of about that. In a weird way, this is a very similar film to the eye. Uh, almost the eye too, actually, at any rate. You know, uh, Ileana Douglas is uh, Kevin Bacon's sister-in-law, who she is always a delight. She's a wonderful actress. She's really good in this as well. And she gives him a little dink a dink do with the hypnosis where she uh, squeegees open his third eye. And now all of a sudden he's being haunted by visions of this girl uh, who I couldn't place for the longest time. And it turns out she is an actress who was on um, uh, House M.D., for the longest time. And anyway, it, it made me laugh when I, uh, Jennifer Morrison is her name. And, uh, yeah, so she plays a girl who is described by the neighborhood kids as slow and then went missing. And like the one thing you can say about Sir of Echoes is it's not, uh, surprising as a movie. It is a very predictable film. As soon as you realize that, oh, he's renting a house from his neighbors, and by the way, and has been doing some renovations. Um, also, there's a, a kid, one of the neighbor kids is like, oh, he's the football star. He's got such a future ahead of him. And it's like, ah, bull to the shit. That that kid has been up to something shady. Because Kevin Bacon seeing dead girls in his house, and it, it's probably this kid's fault. Um, and all that kind of turns out to be true, but... So it's not it's not a surprising story about it. based on a Richard Matheson novel I should point out because Richard Matheson rules. Uh you should you should read a lot of Richard Matheson. You should watch a lot of Richard Matheson scripted stuff. I uh, did everything from uh like Trilogy of Terror to some old uh Twilight Zone episodes and wrote I Am Legend shit. I mean the guy is a, a more than a legend in in genre literature and and uh television and movie filmmaking. So, you know, written by a guy who knows what he's doing, knows his way around a story. And it's a good story. Um, It's just not terribly surprising. And I wish that it had some more moves than it does. But it's creepy. And it's effective. Like, it's filled with good acting. That's maybe the best thing about it is that, like, Kevin Bacon's really good in it. There's a great moment where he has seen another vision of the girl from House. Uh, who is dead telling him that he needs to dig. And so he starts digging up his yard and his wife comes out to him and is like, what are you doing? And he just looks at her like she's crazy and he goes, digging. Um, And it's it, a great delivery. It's a, a, a really good scene. And, you know, there's some stuff with the kid where it sort of suggests that he is, uh, the child in the relationship is... Uh, going to have the site forever and like the it's weird because this movie takes some detours where it's like oh there's this group that meets because they can all see dead people and when Catherine Irby shows up to kind of investigate on behalf of Kevin Bacon they get real pissed off at her and throw her out They're like what are you doing here yeah it like all that stuff is really interesting there are all these little nuggets in the movie that I find really intriguing and I kind of wish they added up to more in the film itself, but I still like it. Uh, I still think it's really, um, atmospheric and, and moody and tense at times. And, and I will say that there is one, not really a twist, but it's a nice character turn at the end of the film that I will leave unsaid, uh, for those of you who have yet to see stir of echoes, Again, I don't feel like I'm really spoiling anything because the movie telegraphs uh, its moves pretty clearly. I feel like if you have seen, you know, movies, then you would kind of sniff out uh, what it is that Stir of Echoes is laying down. Um, But like I said, uh, it's a a great piece of entertainment. I'm glad I went back to it. As as I told you in previous episodes, we're not just doing the tried and true here. We're doing a movie 
that I'd never seen all the way through. And on this list, there are going to be movies that I've never seen before. So uh, they're not always going to be great glowing reviews. But with Star of Echoes, I can say, like, you should have this on your Halloween list. This is a, a really spooky movie. It's a really good movie. Um, it's not perfect. It, it it takes some missteps. But uh, all in all, uh, I think the performances really put it over the top. And, and David Kep, uh, for all his flaws, potentially as a director, um, he knows how to put together a good tense scene. So we'll, uh, we'll certainly give it to him there. But guys... Uh, we have tomorrow to go. Uh, this is the beginning of the second week in uh, in our journey through the 31 days of Halloween. I'm uh, I'm excited to get started on on the second week because shit is going to change up. We are not always going to be doing um, not just things that I have or haven't seen, but we're gonna veer away from the haunting stuff eventually. We got a few more, a few more haunted stories to go. And then we're going to leave haunted people and places and things behind and shift into other kind of subgenres of horror. So um, savor it while you can. I love, listen, folks, let's get real. I love haunted house movies. Uh, it's the one thing I learn about myself uh, every year when I'm like, ah, do I really want to watch The Haunting again? And then I watch The Haunting. I'm like, I love, I love a good haunted house story. I love it. So... <laughs> Uh, we are going to continue for a little while longer in, in what may be my favorite subgenre of uh, supernatural horror. Um, eh, that's probably not true. I would Creature features are really where my heart lies, but a haunted house not far behind. Now, you, you put creatures in a haunted house, and then you got the movie House uh, from Ethan Wiley and uh, Steve Miner, uh, which we did on this very uh, this very series, so... Uh, see, it all comes back together. It's Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail, people. Um, speaking of spooky snakes, uh, thanks for listening. As always, if you would like to drop me a line and uh, and let me know how you're celebrating Halloween, Halloween, what you're watching, what you're enjoying, what you're thinking, please do so. Uh, you can reach me via the email at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Make sure it is plural because there are more than one Legion podcasts. And uh, yeah, uh, make sure the subject line is Halloween and, uh, and you know, drop me a line. Uh, thanks very much for listening. Uh, you don't have to rate a review or anything like this. This is just a little something extra we're doing because it's fun, right? It's Halloween. Let's watch a bunch of movies. Let's talk about a bunch of movies. Uh, I, I'm very excited to share more and more with you as uh, as the weeks go along, and uh, and that's it. I will talk to you soon. Have a uh, have yourselves a great Wednesday, and most of all, people have yourselves a very spooky Wednesday uh, this midweek. And uh, and I'll talk to you tomorrow with a whole new movie here on Legion Podcasts, uh, Thirty One Days of Halloween. <laughs>